Last time we looked at the basic tools and techniques that we can use to measure correlation. Today I will start to put that knowledge into practice. But as with most things, there's a right way and a wrong way of doing this. And if you're not really careful, you could end up using a suboptimal technique to measure correlation. And that won't provide the results you need to properly inform your decision making. And so in today's episode, I'll be providing guidance to help you avoid going down this path. Stay tuned. When it comes to measuring correlation to inform a well-balanced portfolio, there's definitely a right way and a wrong way of doing that. But of course, if you're not aware of the wrong way, then there's always a chance that you'll take that approach. And so today, the purpose is to raise that awareness so that you don't head down the wrong route. So let's now start with some data that I've collected from a variety of asset classes. So what I have here is one year's worth of data that I've extracted from the Darwin X platform. And this just represents the close prices of each H1 bar. So you can see down the left hand side here, the date and the time that all of these values occurred on. And then across the top, I have a selection firstly of currency pairs and moving across, we then move into the stock indices. And finally, at the end here, we have gold. And so with this raw data, we're going to look at how we can measure the correlation between some of these assets. So let's start by looking at Euro dollar and Aussie dollar. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply create a line chart of both of the assets side by side. Now, on the face of it, it looks as if these two are relatively correlated. So we have a section where the price goes down for both assets. And then beyond this point here, it appears that they both begin to rise. However, if we look a little bit more closely at certain sections here, we can see that while Euro dollar is rising here, Aussie dollar is still coming down. But of course, in order to ascertain a quantitative value, as we saw in the last episode, we have to use the correlation coefficient, which is R, or the coefficient of determination, R squared. Now, as I said before, I'm going to show you in this episode the technique that you need to avoid, because the temptation here is to simply take these values for Euro dollar and Aussie dollar and calculate the correlation coefficient based on those. So let me show you now what happens when we do that. Now I'm just going to adjust the axes on this a little bit so that we can see it more clearly. So just to explain what we're looking at here, Along the x-axis, we have the values of Euro dollar. And then on the y-axis, we have the values for Aussie dollar. And as we can see here, there's definitely a pattern. And it's almost like a trail of prices as the ratio between them has changed. Now, of course, technically, we can draw a trend line through this very easily. and also very quickly create our R squared value that you can see here. However, is this giving us an accurate representation of the correlation between these two assets? So let's now compare this to a few similar charts for different pairs. So here we have the Aussie New Zealand dollar price versus the Euro CAD. Now you'll notice a difference here, and I think there's a good reason for this. This chart on the left was for Euro dollar 
and Aussie dollar. Now, both of those symbols include the US dollar. And so naturally, that's going to contribute to correlation between those pairs. Whereas here, where we have the Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, and the Euro CAD, there's no common currency between the two. And so the behavior seems a lot more random. And that is reflected in the R square value. And so just as a reminder, a value for R squared of one indicates a perfect correlation, whereas a value of zero represents no correlation. And so there's much less correlation here using this particular technique. Let's now move on and take a look at a couple of stock indices. So here we've got the Dow Jones Industrial and the S&P. And here it appears that there's a much larger relationship between the two. And that's exactly what we'd expect because typically when one stock index goes up, so does another and vice versa. So I'm not at all surprised at the R square value that's coming out of this. And then finally, here we have a stock index, which is the German DAX against the price of gold. And here, as you can see both visually and also by the R square value, the apparent correlation here is a lot weaker. So if we come back now to our original Forex pair, let me explain what the main drawback is of using this technique. As you can see from the chart, there is this longer term relationship between the prices of each of those Forex pairs. However, as you can see at various points here, the prices do diverge. And so clearly, those prices were moving against each other at certain points. So for example, Euro dollar might be strengthening while Aussie dollar was getting weaker and vice versa. And that valuable information is lost when we produce the correlation coefficient in this way. And of course, that is critical to know for our portfolio diversification strategy. We need to know how often these symbols are moving in the same direction and how often they go in opposite directions. So although on the face of it, this might seem like a logical way in order to calculate the correlation, I feel that it will not be giving you the information that you actually need to base those decisions on about which assets you should have in your portfolio and which you should leave out. Now, I thought it was really important to do this illustration today because it does seem like the most obvious way of performing the calculation. And the whole purpose of me going through it, of course, was so that you can avoid taking this technique. But that does leave the question, of course, about how should we therefore measure correlation in order to inform these really important decisions about the makeup of our portfolio. And that will be the topic of the next episode. If it's out now, you'll see it top right. In the meantime, please do give me a thumbs up if you've got value from today. And now until next time, trade safe.